Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 24 of season two of Live with Annie. It is always a treat to see all of you here and it really means a lot that you have made the time to be with us. So thank you very much. If you enjoy these episodes, please give us some hearts or thumbs up and take a minute to follow and like us wherever you are watching. If you know someone else who you think might enjoy the information that we share, we'd also love it if you'd tell them about Live with Annie. The easiest way to do that is to just tag them while you're watching, because that will take them directly to the episode and they can watch it too. If tagging is new to you, just type the at symbol followed by the name that they use on the platform where you are. Their name and picture will pop up so you can make sure you've got the right person. If you do, click on that, type a note, and then submit it. Finally, if you have any comments or questions as we go, please be sure to add them in the comments. We really like interacting with you and we will do our best to answer any questions before we close. Last week we began our mini trunk show of purses, totes, and accessories, sharing some of our favorite purse style bags. If you missed last week's episode, or if you want to watch it again, remember that all of the episodes of Live with Annie are available online. You can watch them on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, or by going to byannie.com slash live. Because everything is in one place, I find it's easiest to just go to the byannie.com live link, and we'll put up all those links so that you can find them easily. Today we are going to continue our mini trunk show and showcase some more of our favorites, purses, totes, and accessories. We're going to showcase six easy to make bags along with some fun accessories to use inside them. We're going to start with a really easy pattern that is perfect for summer sewing and that is Texture Magic Totes. So this was one of the very first patterns we wrote um, for using Texture Magic, which is a shrinking fabric. And it includes instructions for simple to make drawstring bags in two sizes. So both of these are the small tote. Uh, the pattern also includes a large tote. I don't seem to have one around anywhere, but it's a lot bigger. It's probably twice this size. So these bags are really easy enough for the grandkids to sew. So if you're looking for a fun summer project for your kids or grandkids, this might be just the perfect one. They're perfect for kids to carry to a sleepover or to hold a towel, a snack, and more if they're going to the pool. So Texture Magic is a shrinking fabric and it creates texture. So we, when we wrote these, we were using Texture Magic. That's no longer available. So now we use uh, Stitch and Steam from Bosal and you can find that on our website. And that's available on the base of each of these totes. And then we also added a little bit of Soft and Stable into the handle of each of these. And I love how that makes them stand up and not be floppy. So these are super simple and easy to make, and let me just show you kind of how the steps work. So the first thing that you're going to do is decide what fabric you want to use for the base and take some um, shrinking fabric, Texture Magic or Stitch and Steam, sew it to it, and you can sew it however you want. So it's a fun way to practice some free motion stitching or um, just, you know, doing straight lines, however you want to do it. So you'll do that, then you'll steam it, and that will shrink it, creating the texture. So then you're going to take that piece and trim it to the size that it tells you in the pattern, and you're also going to cut out the pieces that become the top of the tote. And you're going to sew those together, press your seams away from the textured fabric, then you're going to take a lining piece of fabric, put those together, so all the way around, leaving a little opening, and then those edges will be folded over on each end to create your drawstring at the top. You'll sew your side seams together because everything's finished. You'll make a boxed bottom, which you do by drawing a little square. You'll sew your boxed bottom and your bag will be done. So super simple and easy to do. 
and they're a lot of fun to play with texture magic and try doing some different designs. So on here, we used uh, Razzle Dazzle, which is a heavy thread. We put it in our bobbin and we stitched from the back using a crosshatch design. And on this tote, we did a variegated um, thread in turquoise and brown to kind of blend with the other fabrics. And we set our machine on a serpentine stitch and again did a little crosshatch design. So fun and easy to do. Um, you open it with the little drawstring on the top made just with grosgrain ribbon. You can add some beads on there to help keep it closed. Just a fun little project. So again, that one is called Texture Magic Totes. All right, let's move on now to Totally Trendy Totes. So last week we talked about Annie's favorite purses. And as I said then, it's one of my favorite bags to carry. But the assembly methods used on it make it a little bit of a challenge because the zipper is closed on each end and that makes it a little bit hard to get in and sew this, the edge of this, the zipper down. And you also have to do some French seams to finish the raw edges on the inside. So in an effort to keep what we liked about that pattern, but make construction easier, we designed this pattern. And this is called Totally Trendy Totes. So we kept the size, the style, and the design similar, and we still used quilted fabric for the body of the bag so that we wouldn't have a loose lining. We added borders and pockets, so that was very similar, but we greatly simplified the zipper at the top as well as the side seams. So I don't have one of these that's empty, but let me bring up this one because I think you'll be able to see it a little easier. It's a little bit bigger. So we now have a recessed zipper that can open and fall flat against the sides. And we also now bind the raw edges on the side of the bag before we sew the side seams and press those seams open to reduce bulk. So both of those things make this bag much easier to, than Annie's favorite purse and give you a very similar style bag. The other thing that we did on this pattern is we added two more sizes. So in addition to the smallest size, which we call medium in the pattern, we also added a large and an extra large. So I'm going to show you the large first and then I'm going to set it down so I have room for it. So the large is what I would take if I was going to a quilt guild meeting. It's plenty big to hold uh, a couple of quilts and whatever else I want to take. And um, the extra large, which I'm going to lift up on top of the table, is even bigger. So as you can see, when I was doing a lot of hand quilting, I could put my queen size quilt and my quilting hoop in here. It's also perfect for a family's worth of beach towels and supplies for a day at the pool. So it is one big humongous tote, um, but simple and easy to make and really a, a useful size for lots of larger things. Because we didn't want to have stitching lines going through these borders, we decided not to put any pockets on the inside. So instead, each bag or each size includes instructions to make some clear vinyl project bags that will fit inside the totes. So on my large one, I said that would be perfect for carrying my wet swimsuits, you know, some dirty flip-flops, sunglasses, sunscreen, um, you know, whatever else you want to put in there. But those are each sized perfectly to fit the tote that it goes into. So again, that is called Totally Trendy Totes and super fun and easy to make. All right, next let's talk about this one, which you're going to say looks very similar, which yes, it does. So in 2010, I was asked to teach on a quilting cruise and they were looking for a really simple bag pattern. And so we decided to, to adapt the Totally Trendy Totes pattern and make a new pattern for the class. And that pattern became very appropriately Bon Voyage. So as you can see, it's very similar to the smallest size in Totally Trendy Totes. And the outside looks very similar. There are pockets on front and back, borders on top and bottom, and handles for carrying it. But we did make some changes on the inside of this tote. So one thing that we did, and here is one that is turned inside out, 
we added a full width slip pocket on one side so you've got three different divisions in it and we also added a zippered hanging pocket on the other side. We also added um, a different style of project bag. So it's still got a vinyl window so you can see what's inside, but this time we did quilted fabric on the, on the bottom. And so that is made to fit in size and very fun. If you have made our By Any Basics pattern pitch Peacekeeper, this is going to be very similar, but rather than using mesh for the front, we're using vinyl on this. And again, it's made to fit perfectly inside. So both Bon, Voy bon Voyage and Totally Trendy Totes are really easy to make because most of the construction is done on a flat piece. So I want to show you a little bit about how those steps work too keep this up here just to make my table look a little more festive and fun. Stick that inside there. And just pull this out. So all Bon Voyage, um, Totally Trendy Totes, Annie's Favorite Purses, all of those are made in a very similar manner. So basically you start with a large rectangle of quilted fabric. If you are doing a directional fabric, note that this becomes the front, this becomes the back, this becomes the bottom. You're going to have to do something um, specific if you're using a directional fabric. The pattern does not give you instructions for that. So um, you'll need to just know what to do. And it's very doable, it's very easy. And in next week's Live with Annie, we are going to share tips for doing that. So be sure to join us then. But here's a little quick overview of the steps. So you're going to start with your rectangle of fabric. You're going to mark some lines on it. The first thing that you're going to do is attach your pockets um, on both ends. Then you're going to attach handles which cover the raw edges of the pockets and end about right here. And then you'll add borders, one on the bottom that covers the raw edges of that one on the top. It's possible that you do these borders before you do the rest. It's been a while since I made this, so I don't remember. But, but basically, add your borders. Those cover your raw edges. Then you're going to bind, you're going to cut some rectangles out of the sides, and you're going to bind the side seams so that you don't have any raw edges showing. Then you'll sew your side seams, make your box bottom, you'll attach your recessed zipper at the top, and bind the top edge. So super simple and easy to do. The recessed zipper is made so that you've got a loop that fits right inside the top of the bag. And again, the binding caused the raw, caused, covers the raw edges on that. We covered the steps to make this race, recessed zipper in Live with Annie in week number 39 of season one. So if you haven't made that and want some help with that step, just go to byannie.com live and scroll down to the past episodes section, click on the drop down menu and then scroll down to week 39, which was called Tips, Tricks and Techniques. So the part about doing the recess zipper starts at about 47 minutes. So you might wanna make yourself a note that you could add to your pattern um, to help you with that step. So again, that was Bon Voyage and also a similar to the steps that you would use for totally trendy totes. All right. Next, I want to talk about Day Tripper, which is actually all three of these bags. So um, this was a, an earlier bag. It uses a very similar technique. So the construction is the same. You start with a large rectangle, you attach parts and pieces to it, you um, make a boxed bottom, and then you do a zipper installation that's very similar. It um, goes all the way around the top and goes down inside. So these are just handy little padded cases that were designed for carrying an iPad, a tablet, or other electronic gear like that. And the zipper, again, just like the others, opens so that it's got really easy access to everything inside. It falls flat if you don't need it, but it zips shut to keep everything safe and secure. It also has a padded pocket on front that's a perfect place to put your cords, put your chargers, and then inside is a really simple little fabric slip pocket where you can put your phone or pens or other items like that. 
So it's designed that you can carry it over the shoulder or you can make the strap adjustable and wear it crossbody. And these we made using just one fabric for the whole bag, um, but the pattern gives you instructions if you've got a really beautiful focus fabric like we did on this bag, it gives you instructions for how to align the pieces so that if you've got a fabric like that or a fabric that's directional, you'll know how, to, where, how and where to cut it and how to position the pocket and things like that too. So that again is Day Tripper and three different versions of that. We have another bag that's very similar, which was actually the predecessor to Day Tripper, and this is called My Pad Case. And it has the same adjustable strap, it has the same inner pocket. This time we put the pocket on the back, the padded pocket on the back instead of the front, but it's a little bit smaller. So we designed this specifically for an iPad, so it's only one inch deep at the bottom, whereas Day Tripper is two inches deep. So you can carry a little bit more in Day Tripper. The height and the width are pretty much the same other than that. It, this pattern also includes instructions for embellishing the front. So you can either do a strip piece section down the middle, or you can do a panel that you accent with Texture Magic. So on this one, we added some wool batting between the Texture Magic or the shrinking fabric and the exterior fabric and then did a large stipple stitch with meandering lines to give it some fun interest. We did film a series of videos that take you step by step through the whole process of making the My Bad case. They're really old. Um, we have come a long way since we filmed those. They don't have very good lighting. The camera angles are, aren't great. I look like I'm about a million years old. But if you need help, there is some good information there because they walk pretty much step by step through the process. And you can find those by just going to the um, page for my pad case and you'll see a link or you can go to the tutorials tab and you'll find a link there as well. All right, I'm gonna get all of those off the table and make us some room here. Bring this up. I'll be talking about that in a little while. So we have one last tote bag pattern to, to share, and this also is an oldie but goodie. And this one is called to, to Market to Market Tote and Tag. So this pattern has instructions for this easy to make tote bag, bag and also a nifty little name tag and essentials bag. So um, this one does not have, or we quilted the main fabric to just the soft and stable, and then we quilted a separate piece for the outer slip, slip pockets, and they go on front and back. They're divided into three sections that are made by the handles that go on top of them, and um, then the lining on this is loose, so it's a drop-in lining. I will readily admit that I don't like this style of lining, which is why we only have a handful of patterns that use that style of construction, but it does make it a little bit easier, and so you know that's an option if you're looking for a, a, a bag that doesn't have to be quilted through all the layers. So on this one, it's designed that you can either leave the top completely open, or you can do a recessed zipper just as we did on the other totes um, for additional security. The name tag bag is made to wear over your shoulder or around your neck, and it's perfect if you're going to a quilt show um, to use as a name badge holder or just use it as a small purse. So there's a clear vinyl pocket on the front. Um, I like to put my name badge in there if I'm at a show. If I'm at home, I put my shopping list in there. You could put a passport in there. Any of those would work. If you prefer not to have a vinyl pocket, you could certainly substitute a quilted fabric or just a plain fabric pocket if you want. And then there's a zippered pocket at the top. I designed this when I was doing a lot of shows and I was always amazed at how many people would stand in a long line to check out and chit chat with their friends and then they'd get up to pay and they'd have to dig through their great big tote and all their purchases to find their credit card. So I designed this so that their credit card and money could be right there. They could have this around their shoulder and it would be easy to access um, when they were shopping. So we also put pockets on the back and divided these into three pockets. So you could put your cell phone or your glasses in there, a pen or pencil. Just know that this pattern is, is fairly old 
and it may not fit today's size phones, so be sure to check the measurements to make sure your phone's going to fit if you make this. You might need to skip some of these. You also might want to make that, that uh, pocket a little bit taller because phones today are bigger and it's nice to have it so that it slides down inside and you're not worried about it falling out. Inside is just a great big open area. It's a great place to put your receipts, your travel documents, a little notebook, lists, whatever you want to do that. And again, we do have a video for this. It's called Make a Simple Project. And you will find links on both the To Market To Market pattern page and on the Tutorials tab. So just go to Tutorials and scroll down to the Techniques section and you'll see one that says Make a Simple Project. All right, so that is to market, to market, tote, and tag. Let's go on now to some really simple accessories for holding money, credit cards, ID, glasses, and more inside your tote bags. So the first one we're going to talk about is folding wallet. And this, again, like the others, is one of my very early patterns. It's a handy little folding wallet that folds in thirds and closes with Velcro. So on the back, there is a slip pocket that closes with Velcro. You could leave that off if you want it. Originally, we designed this for a cell phone or sunglasses. Both of those sizes have changed since we wrote this. Um, so it's a pattern we really want to update. My phone fits in there, but it won't close. And I would worry maybe about it falling out if I was going very far with it. So that pocket is on the back. Then on the inside, we have several other pockets. So you have a see-through pocket at the top where you can put your driver's license or other ID cards. There's a zippered pocket where you can put coins. Behind that is space um, for currency, so dollar bills and receipts. And then we have a bunch of individual pockets for credit cards on both sides of this little flap. There's a spot to put your checkbook down at the bottom or a passport and a tab to hold a key, um, ring of keys or your pen. It's got a detachable strap on it that um, fastens on with little hook and, hook and eye um, fasteners. So you can take it off completely if you want to just carry it as a wallet or you can adjust the length of it to wear over your shoulder or cross body or bring it up with two pieces and make it just to wear over your arm. So fun little easy wallet to make. We do have a full series of videos that take you step by step through the whole process of making the folding wallet. And it includes techniques for quilting it, marking the pieces, inserting the zippers, sewing with vinyl, making the straps and, straps and everything. Again, these are really old videos. They're not up to our current standards, but there's some good info there if you want to make this pattern. And just like the others, you're going to find them either on the products, links to them on the products, patterns product page or on the tutorials tab. So that again is folding wallet. If you're looking for another really easy um, project for organizing your purse, these are also great for gifts. Be sure and check out this pattern, which is called Necessaries. So the pattern includes instructions for a little zippered mini bag, a folding wallet, and a double eyeglass case. And so this little zippered mini bag um, can be used for coins, you can put makeup in there, you can put toiletries, other personal items that you want to keep safe and secure. Once you understand the process of making it, you're going to realize how easy it is to make these in a variety of sizes. I know Leslie makes a really small one of these that I'm pretty sure she uses for her earbuds. Uh, there's lots of ways you can use these. And they're really great for using up scraps of quilted fabric. And you know who can't use a little bag um, to use as a gift or something to match a new bag that you made. So the double eyeglass cases uh, was designed to hold either sunglasses or reading glasses. Just like everything else, sizes have changed since this pattern was designed. So to fit today's larger glasses, you may need to increase the height and width of these pieces a little bit. So I was able to fit my sunglasses in there but you probably wouldn't be able to get anything in that outside pocket. This also is a great little place to carry a phone if you want to protect it inside your purse. Okay, so the little pocket wallet has a little Velcro closure. 
and it also has a little zippered pocket, which is perfect for coins or bills. On top of that is a see-through um, vinyl pocket, which is a great place for your driver's license or business cards or credit cards, and then another pocket at the bottom for credit cards. So super simple and easy, and it's small enough that it does fit in your pocket. Here's another version of that that we made. We added, a, instead of plain fabric for the border, we texturized some fabric, and then we also added a little strap just by making a strap and sewing it right across where it folds here. So that's a really fun way to make a cute little purse for a little girl um, who would just love that. All right, this also we embellished using one of those little fabric flowers. And I was going to show you that last week and couldn't find my um, step outs that I made, but I did find them today. So I want to just really quickly walk through the process of doing that. So the first thing that you're going to do is cut a circle. And I cut my circles using our Creative Grids rulers. So this is one that I cut using a three and a half inch circle. This one I'm pretty sure was a four and a half inch circle. But you're just going to cut a circle out and then you're going to take your piece of fabric and fold it in half and finger press it so that you get a nice sharp crease there. Then you're going to bring this edge into that folded crease and press again. And then you're just going to, starting on one edge, take that and fold it so that it's at the center and crease it fold it to the center and crease it, fold it to the center and crease it. You're just going to keep going until you run out of fabric. You get there and you bring that over. My eyes don't want to focus here. There you go. And you've got it all folded. I usually put a little pin on to hold it together and then you can take a variety of buttons to sew to the middle. Um, to, to embellish it and create the center of your flower. So as you can see, that's what we did there. And depending on the size of circle that you use, um, you can layer them. You can do all kinds of fun things, make them really small and make little teeny tiny flowers. So that's just a fun little embellishment that you can put on purses, wall hangings. I've put them on gift cards. Lots of little ways to do that and a great way to use up some of your stash of buttons and scraps of fabric too. All right, so that pattern again is called Necessaries and three fun little easy projects inside. All right, the other bag that's really nice for organizing things inside a purse or tote is our pattern called Diddy Bags. So this pattern includes zippered bags in three sizes, small, medium, and large. And these are super quick and easy to make. Each one of them has a zippered top. It's got a little loop to grab on the side that helps you open it, and it has a border across the front. So this small one is going to fit in just about any purse or bag, and it's perfect for makeup or other little items that you want to carry. The medium sized one is what I would use to carry my charger and cords and my other tech gear. And the large is going to be big enough for bottles, brushes, um, organizing a diaper bag. If you made it in more masculine fabrics, it would make a great guy's toiletries bag. So again, like the other patterns we've shown today, this is one of our older patterns. It does not have an add-on video. It doesn't have our newest layout and design. But the process is simple, and if you've made our Buy Any Basics patterns, it's going to be very doable for you. One thing that I do want to note is that while it looks very similar to Easy Does It, it is assembled very differently. So Easy Does It is made that you have a front and a back, and then you have a zipper side strip that goes all the way around to form the top, sides, and bottom of the bag. Diddy Bags is designed so that you start with one piece of fabric, very similar to what you noticed on the totes. So you start with one rectangle of fabric, you mark some lines on it and do some stitching. And just as we did on Petty 4, every time you stitch through Soft and Stable, that encourages it to fold. So we stitch some lines to encourage it to fold at the bottom and top. And then we attach a zipper to the bag. After we actually make some cutouts here. So then you're going to attach a zipper. You'll then take this side of the zipper 
put it like this, attach this side of the zipper to this side of the bag. Using a zipper longer than you need is going to make it that you can open that zipper and flatten this to make it really easy to do. And then after you're done with that, you take, you trim your zipper even with these edges. You've got a little and piece that you sew on here. You bring that down, you sew around the outside edges, and then you bind those seams. So it's got less binding and I think easier to do binding than what we have on Easy Does It. But this is what it then looks like on the inside once you get those ends sewn. So you'll sew this piece, you'll sew that together, and then you'll just bind around this edge on each side. So super simple and easy to do and um, three fun sizes. So again, those are called Diddy Bags. All right, I've got one more project to show, and it's perfect for organizing items in a purse or bag, and this is called Glow and Go. So this uh, pattern was designed by my beautiful daughter-in-law, Glow, and it includes instructions for two projects. We've got a handy wrap that's perfect for makeup and a coordinating zippered bag. And on both of these, we lined them with slicker so that they would be wiped clean. They're perfect for carrying makeup, brushes, tools, toiletries, um, wherever you're traveling. And it's got an expanding mesh pocket that has fold over elastic bindings on the top. So it really expands and contracts to hold your items really safely and securely. You can customize these divisions uh, to fit what you want to carry. And then there's a vinyl pocket or flap at the top that folds over to keep everything secure, keep things from falling out, keep things clean, and then you just fold it up and secure it with a, a strap. So there's a slider on here that makes it easy for you to adjust it, and it expands so um, it, if you've got bulky stuff in there as I do, it's going to hold it safely and securely. This little zippered bag is super simple and easy to make, and it's perfect for your larger items like um, hand lotions, hair brushes, bottles, things like that. Just a quarter a yard of fabric and one 30 inch zipper makes two of these bags. So anytime I make this, I go ahead and cut out and make two at a time. I keep one for the set that I'm doing, and I have another on hand to give as, I, as a gift. So the pattern does include instructions for lining the inside with the slicker to make the wipe clean lining. And this pattern is one of our newer patterns, so it not only includes our newest layout and design, but it also has an add-on video that are going to help you with the more unique or challenging parts of it. So it's a really great pattern if you're looking for an easy and unique gift for men or women. Made in the right fabrics, it's a great one for guys to carry their toiletries in. And it's really good for using little bits of fabric, mesh, fold over elastic, and vinyl that are in your stash. So that again is Glow and Go. So perfect for organizing all kinds of items in your purse. So we talked about six bags, at least four different accessories. We hope you enjoyed that little mini trunk show and that, again, you found a new project or two that you'd like to make. As always, please be sure to check with your favorite local quilt shop to get the patterns and supplies for your projects. And if they don't have them, remind them that they can order them either directly from us or from their favorite distributor. We all want to do our part to keep our local quilt shops strong and successful. But of course, if you don't have a local quilt shop, you can also order directly from us at byani.com. Let's move on now to some of the questions that you've asked. Do any of the tote bag patterns have an add-on video? None of the tote bag patterns that I showed you today have an add-on video in our new format. Um, which one was it that I said? Um, the MyPad case has a video that goes step by step through it that shows how to do the recessed zipper. And basically, the steps on that are going to be very similar on the others. So um, that, if you need help with the zipper, it's there, but not the others. We are planning to update some of these patterns um, this year, hopefully by fall. Um, so we will be coming out with newer versions of those with a few changes and also some add-on videos. But right now, no. Can you show how the inside pockets are installed on Bon Voyage? 
Yes, so, so the one thing about Bon Voyage is that you got to make sure you do things in the right order. And truthfully, right now I don't remember what order that is. But I know that this pocket, which is the slip pocket, starts as a piece of fabric that's twice as big as this. You fold it in half, you top stitch along the top, and then you've got a line marked here. So you're going to align it below that, sew across it with a quarter inch seam, fold it up, and then you're going to stitch through these lines to create the division lines on it. That does create um, stitching lines through your border on the outside of the bag. We put this on the back, so it was on the back of the bag. And then on the inside of the bag, we decided to do this hanging pocket instead so that we wouldn't have lines through the border on the inside. So this is made with um, two sets of fabric. You've got one that makes the back, one that makes the front, and you attach a zipper to that and sew it there. You bind around the outside edges, and then you just center that on the side of your bag, sew it in place, and then after you've attached your zipper and your binding, um, it's attached. So super easy to do and fun little bags to make. I have been carrying a Bon Voyage or a Small Totally Trendy Totes for the past couple weeks, and I really love it because my laptop fits in there, my The Right Stuff covered planner fits in there, and my um, clipboard that I usually keep things that I need to do fits in, and I have a quick easy bag that I can throw over my shoulder, and I'm not carrying tons of stuff back and forth um, from home to work every day. All right, the next question was, do you think Day Tripper could be made with a little more width at the bottom? So are you talking about making it so that it's wider here and angles up? Um, sure. It, well, I guess it would be the same on the top. You just make your box bottom differently. You will have to make adjustments because your pocket ends here. So you'd have to add um, distance here to make it wider, but you certainly can do that. Can you use a magnet instead of a zipper for the totes? You could put a magnet right here in the middle that would hold it shut. Uh, you could make a flap that would go over that would hold it shut. That's certainly an option too. If you are going to make a magnet, you're going to want to attach it to your quilted fabric before you put your border on. Um, so you have to kind of think those things through, but certainly possible. One other thing that I should mention about this bag uh, that Glow and I have found a little bit confusing lately as we've been picking out fabrics to make these. This is your main fabric. These are your cut out of your coordinating fabric. So even so, when we're looking at this, this is usually the one that we're focusing on. But we have to remind ourselves that this is the fabric that's quilted to the lining, and then these are sewn on the top afterwards. So pay attention to that when you're um, ready to make a tote. Someone asked, "What is slicker?" So slicker is an iron-on laminate that turns any smooth fabric into a wipe clean laminated fabric. So we've got it on this piece of fabric here. It looks a little bit like contact paper. It has a release paper that it's attached to. You cut it to the size of your fabric. We usually cut our fabric a little bit bigger so that we're not worried about it sticking to our ironing board. You pull the release paper off, you put the sticky side down, you put the release paper on top, and then you move your iron set on whatever the pattern tells. It's been a while since I used it. I think it's medium. And you just fuse it in place. But it makes a nice wipe clean lining. One question that people often ask about Slicker is, can it be washed? Um, it is a product from Lazy Girl Designs. And when Joan designed it, she said it's made um, for wipe clean only. It shouldn't be um, used with methods that Im involve immersion with water, which to me meant don't put it in the washer and dryer. Of course, I knew that I would want to wash my bag, um, so I tried it, and what happens is it separates a little bit. I didn't worry too much about that because it was sewn in, but I have found that over repeated use and repeated washings, mine has started to um, not wear as well. So I would definitely recommend using it in places where you can just wipe it clean and not put it in the washer and dryer. All right, on the Diddy Bag Large, could it be revised to be deeper at the bottom front to back? So again, just like I said for the, um, the, the Day Tripper or the MyPad case, 
you certainly could um, just, when you do your math, add extra. You'd have to add extra to this. You'd have, at, have to add extra at the top so that this was wider. There's a fair amount of math that you'd have to do. But make, I always say, make one according to the pattern so that you understand the process. And then the changes that you need to make will make a whole lot more sense to you. All right, doing Bon Voyage right now, does the top part of the zipper on the inside zipper pocket get sewn down flat? It, yeah, that top part of that zipper, you just lay it right on top of your other fabric and sew right across the top. You don't do anything to turn it under. If you want it to add a binding on there to make it look prettier, you certainly could, but the pattern is designed to keep it simple and easy, and we just sew across the top. So super easy to do. I have made a couple of bags and will make more. I do have issues with skipped stitches when it comes through sewing through all the layers and binding. Any suggestions? My experience with skip stitches is that it's usually caused by either the wrong needle or a needle that's dull. So definitely make sure you've got a new needle when you start a project. And the needle that we recommend is a 9014 top stitch needle or even a size 116 needle. Um, that has solved any problems that I've had with skip stitches and usually for other people too. We also recommend that you use Sew Fine number 50, which is a polyester thread, a 50 weight polyester thread. And the combination of that needle and thread, um, we never have troubles with skip stitches. So that would be my suggestion. Is there a good alternative to Velcro in the bags that use it, such as the wallets or mini purse bags? I would probably try um, magnets, our sew-in magnets. Um, you will have to do some thinking to figure out where to position it. The problem with sew-in magnets is that they have to kind of fit right in the same place. So depending on how much stuff you stuff, let's say, in your wallet, it may not fit and close as easily. So that's kind of why we've ended up using Velcro on most of ours, just to give you a little bit more flexibility in what you carry inside. So all right, it looks like we made it through all the questions. Uh, let's go on now to our featured local quilt shop of the week. As we say every week, we are all about supporting local businesses, especially local quilt shops, because they really are the backbone of our quilting communities. And we do that by hosting a uh, quilt shop contest every year in February. And during that, we encourage you to vote for your favorite quilt shop and tell us what makes them special. I've got to grab a drink of water before we move on. And then to continue the fun and support, each week we highlight a store and some of their voter submissions during this segment. So today we are going to Wellington, Kansas to, um, to the Beehive Quilt Shop. And this is actually quilt, Beehive Quilt Shop and Bee Creative Toys. So it's a fun shop, shop that's owned by Connie Hart and her daughter, Anna Rose White. They opened the store in a renovated J.C. Penney's building in 2018. And they put a lot of labor and love into restoring that 1910 historic downtown building. So today it's a full service quilt shop. They offer fabrics, notions, patterns, classes, books, Brother sewing machines and embroidery machines, and AccuQuilt cutting machines and dies. So they teach customers how to quilt fabric with soft and stable on their embroidery machines or by using the walking foot or Brother's Move It foot technology. For those who would rather quilt by check, they also provide long arm quilting services, and that includes quilting fabrics with soft and stable for Biani projects. The store also has a fantastic selection of toys for people of all ages. And Connie and Anna Rose say we are a busy beehive of activity and we look forward to seeing you in our store. So right now they are getting ready to celebrate Christmas in July and that this year they are going to focus on biannual projects for Christmas gifts and seasonal placemats. They're also going to be highlighting a lot of Halloween fabric and ideas during that time. And then in November, they are planning a fall bag making retreat, again featuring lots of Biani projects. So customers who voted in the contest really raved about the store's great selection and their friendly, helpful staff. When asked what makes the store special, Kathy said, 
As busy as they are, they always stop and say hello to you. They are very nice and helpful. Elsa wrote, the quilts displayed inspire you to try something new. There are many small scale projects that include machine embroidery patterns, plus a large variety of pre-cuts to choose from. They also offer long arm quilting at a reasonable cost. And Pamela said, they are crammed to the rafters with quilt stuff, but their displays are very well done and organized. Oh, excuse me, I've got an itch all of a sudden. And there is always something new. They have a great website and get orders out promptly, and their unboxings on Facebook are very entertaining. So we, we just yesterday, I think, shipped a big trunk show and a bunch of products to Beehive Quilts. So that trunk show is going to be on display in the store from about mid-June to mid-July. So be sure and stop in and check it, and be sure to tell them that Annie sent you. We also want to do a little shout out today to Lisa Stans, who is at Unraveled Quilts in Spencer, Indiana. We got a really great email last week from her customer, Jen, who wrote to say that this Saturday, June 18th, I will be participating in an outdoor quiltathon to raise funds and awareness for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation of India, Indiana not India, Indiana. This will be the third annual quiltathon at Unraveled Quilts in Spencer. Each year, owner Lisa Stans chooses a different organization, charity, or cause to support, and they set up a big tent in their parking lot, and we sew from 10 a.m. Saturday until 2 a.m. Sunday morning. The quiltathon started three years ago as a way to work within the restrictions of COVID and still provide a way for the sewing community to gather safely together, create and make a difference in our area. She said there was no time limit for the first year as it was a sew till you drop event. I lasted until 4 a.m. on Sunday. The event officially ended at noon on Sunday when Lisa called it to an end with three people still sewing. Those are die-hard sewists. So she says, now we have a time limit, but what a great event. This year, the event has 32 sewists registered and they are collecting funds for a great cause. And Jen says, as a healthcare worker, Unraveled Quilts and the Biani Weekly Live videos kept me positive during the COVID lockdown and now continue to motivate and help me gain more sewing skills. I'm so fortunate to have such a great fabric shop where I can get all my mesh and fold over elastic. I am currently working on the tools of the trade bag to keep me organized at the event. Thank you for your great patterns and products. And we want to say thank you to you, Jen, for your sweet email and for your hard work supporting the Quiltathon. And thanks too to Lisa for organizing such a wonderful event. If anyone would like to make a donation to the event, you can make the checks directly to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, or just CFF, and send them to the store. And we're going to put up the address of the store on the screen so you, you've got that easy to find. All right, thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We are going to be back next week at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with another fun episode of Live with Annie when we'll talk about using directional fabrics in your Biani projects. So until then, happy stitching.